Root lesion nematodes are often a hidden problem in many paddocks. Recent work funded by GRDC and carried out by the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries Serial Pathology Team has identified the widespread incidence of two important species of nematodes in central and northern New South Wales. While most growers were unaware of their presence, a small number had discovered the presence of nematodes some years ago and have actively been addressing their management. Roger Pagan, a farmer located at Gilgandra in central New South Wales, has adopted a well-planned, integrated approach to managing nematodes. Roger's farming system includes both crop and livestock enterprises. Paddocks are sown in rotation and specific sequences, including cereal, pulse crops, canola and lucerne-based pastures. Roger first became aware of nematodes when one paddock in particular had not been performing to expectations. We met up with Roger and discussed how he was managing nematodes on his property. A number of years ago, one of the paddocks on the property really wasn't performing well and led Roger to have a closer look at why the crops just weren't performing in that paddock. So what did you find in that, that paddock, Roger? We sowed it down to sunvale wheat and um, from the time the crop came out of the ground we could see patches of it not doing any good. Um, I asked Cole Mullins to come and have a look at it and uh, we just couldn't work it out and even when the crop grew properly right through to harvest there was patches uh, there that were, were stripping and there was other patches quite good. Uh, and then um, the following year we went into uh, nemata uh, uh, faber beans and uh, they were successful and things started to click then and we did tests and we came up with the results that it had nematodes in it. Then we progressed into different crops. Uh, we tried linseed and then the following year we went into uh, tried grout barley which was very very successful it was an unreal crop and uh, we thought we'd kick to goal and everything was right and then uh, we decided to go to uh, Gregory wheat and it was very good. The initial soil test results Roger received showed around 4,000 Pratolancus neglectus nematodes per kilogram of soil. This is double the number regarded to cause significant damage to intolerant crops. At the same time, the test showed very low numbers of the other nematode species, Pratolancus thornii. Further soil tests several years later and most recently in 2010 has shown a reversal in the dominating species of nematodes. Pratolancus neglectus has now declined to undetectable levels but at the same time, the population of Pratolancus thornii has increased to numbers around the crop damage threshold of 2,000 nematodes per kilogram of soil. This has occurred over a 10 year period in the paddock. This reversal of the dominant nematode species can be traced back to some of the varieties that have been sown in the paddock. Varieties classed as being moderately susceptible to susceptible to Pratolancus thornii has allowed thornii numbers to increase. At the same time, varieties classed as tolerant or moderately tolerant have still been able to grow and perform even as numbers have been increasing. I think a lot of people think that nematode country is, uh, this, this paddock is heavy black soil, very self mulching, but a lot of people think that because uh, water goes across your country you'll have nematodes. Well water's never been across this paddock, it'll be one of the highest paddocks on the property. The thing is with nematodes you've just got to keep your eye on the paddock and the crop and uh, if you see any um, differences in the patches in the paddock of uh, high and low patches or discolouring, you've got a problem. And uh, the best way to do it is to do a soil test, send it away and get your tests. So with, because you run sheep as well, we know Lucens good has good resistance to nematodes. How does that fit in? Does it fit in well with the system that you've got on the place? The Lucens does very well here and uh, we're where we've had the nematodes we've grown loosened and, and it's been quite successful and uh, that's in our rotation and uh, we don't seem to have any problems there. I asked Roger if he had any advice to growers who don't have any experience with dealing with nematodes on some of the signs they should be looking for. Yeah, the, the, the colouring of the crop, uh, if you get a pale colour in the crop, if you ride your motorbike across a paddock you'll see it. Uh, it definitely stands out, it's, uh, there's patches there, they could be uh, 20 metres square, 50 metres square uh, and you'll see a, a difference between a good patch and a bad patch. Uh, it's not Gilgai country, it's just straight flat country and that is the problem. Uh, you'll see the discolouring 
And have you looked at the root systems to see what yes, they're doing? Yes, you can see the root systems. You pull up a sick looking plant, well they've got sick looking roots and it's just got no root structure to um, to get any nutrients and it's, it starves itself and uh, you'll see the other patches that are quite good. Rotation is the most effective way of reducing nematode numbers in the soil and preventing their further increase. Rotating with a resistant host crop, variety or pasture will reduce nematode reproduction and cause nematode populations to decline. In host crops described as susceptible, nematodes will multiply rapidly to high population numbers. Some crops and varieties have a natural tolerance to nematodes. In wheat, varieties have different levels of partial resistance. Varieties with partial resistance still play an important role in managing nematode numbers. For this reason, rotation crops are selected on the basis of their resistance. Tolerance refers to the effect of nematodes on plant growth. Tolerant plants are less likely to suffer yield loss when nematodes are present, but at the same time they still allow nematode numbers to increase. As we've seen in Roger's situation, it is important to identify which species of nematodes are present, as different crops and varieties vary in their reaction to the different nematode species. Knowing which species is causing the problems will determine which crops and actual varieties are best grown to reduce their numbers and also to tolerate existing levels without causing significant yield loss. Choosing susceptible crops or varieties may increase nematode numbers further and cause greater yield losses into the future. So have you got any other paddocks at the moment that you think uh, may be a bit suspect that you intend um, to test the nematodes? Yes, uh, we've, uh, we've got creek country that floods when the creek comes up uh, and it it's, uh, was an old grass paddock a few years ago and it has nematodes in it, very high, uh, so we're watching it. Uh, there's other paddocks we've tested and there's nil and um, it doesn't matter whether it's um, red or black soil, you'll still get them and the thing is you've just got to test just a couple of paddocks and then you'll get a, a bit of a, uh, an idea where things are and you'll go from there.